Hey there, Heather, ho there, it's Jeff Cutter Diamond, and welcome you to another Cutter Degrassi Unpopular Opinions video. But this is different. This is actually a countdown video of the top 30 sea duels of all time. And um, I'm going to give you a quick rundown from of the, ten, of the 10 that actually have passed. Now, I didn't write these down in order. I just wrote them down by the polls and all that. So... The 10 storylines that actually have been covered from 21 to 30 have been basically Paige being with Olander in season 4 because and her history of men in that season. Rick's parents should have been mentioned more in the aftermath. We should have known what happened to Rick's parents. Did they face charges for that gun? That Rick is easily accessible. Ratchet's gripe on Emma in season 4 had the tracks in season 2. Um, Emma being triggered by Emma being triggered by Emma being very triggered by a lot of things and all that season 2 was Emma's bad triggers yeah Emma was badly triggered in season 2 as the most triggered of any character in any season Claire can only hold a candle to Emma in season 2 how triggered she was uh, Paige being with Ashley was not that good. My like page causing Ashley to fall in season two was because of her queen bee status. Jay being the number one fill in in Degrassi, living fill in Degrassi. Obviously, Rick is dead, so I could say Jay was the devil on everyone's shoulder. Emma's Clee phase was also mentioned, talked about because of the Rick Murray situation that she's clung on to Manny as a friend no matter what it took. Ed wanted to be with a boy, but her boyfriend history was bad. Emma internalizing things was the character flaw she had, basically. I talked about that. Paige shining Emma in season four because Emma only hung out with the Quiz Bowl team and it seemed that no one wanted to talk to Emma after she protected Rick. And don't believe the hype being underrated because of the whole, the two storylines about Hazel trying to hide her Somalian heritage because of how anti-Muslim sentiment was in the wake of 9-11. And also... JT seems seamster proudness and all that, you know, how people would laugh at JT in the old days because, you know, he's a guy doing girls' work. So those are that. Now it's time to do the next group from 16 to 20. So the poll from 16 to 20 got 32 votes. There was one that really didn't win, but rules are rules. All right, so number 20 on the list is Nick responsible for JT's downfall in C duel number 57 and again I completely forgot to um, set myself up and all that remember the playlist will be in the video but so C duel number 57 was when I talk about Nick being responsible for everything if you look at the list there we go that took a long time that was a long time ago so yeah, that was a long time ago when I did Nick being JT's killer. Nick was probably JT's killer. In March 2021, March on St. Patrick's Day 2021, it came out. So, so anyway. Oh no, I did I did something wrong. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Emma being triggered season two was not in the 20 to 30. It was Maya being with Biles in season 14 was convenient because of her leaving her guilt over camp. My fault. I read it wrong. Emma being the most triggered character is in this list. So anyway, number 20 was Nick for JT's downfall. Now, it was responsible for the simple fact that, yeah, Nick didn't kill him, but the fact is he must have planned something. I mean, Nick had the grudge against JT because JT was dating Mia, Nick's ex, and all that. And no, Nick was not the guy that got Mia pregnant. That was the next one. That was Lucas. So anyway, Nick was upset and and sicked his Lakers gang on Degrassi students like Toby and all them. So the fact of the matter is that you know, we all know Drake Lampley, the redhead, stabbed JT in the order, and Johnny DeMarco was there too to cause trouble, but Johnny DeMarco was shocked by Drake's thing. 
and JT died. But the simple fact is that it's possible that Nick must have sent Johnny and Drake to cause trouble. Because we never hear a mention about Nick ever again after Rock This Town and all that. We don't see anything. And it, and it makes sense that Nick possibly had a chance to because he wanted to cause trouble. Not to kill him, but to make him hurt. You know, he wasn't going to stop until JT gets hurt. But little did he know that JT was going to break off from Mia and be with Liberty. And that would have broken the rivalry. I think that's what JT wanted. And Toby had the guilt about... The fact that he got JT to try to go after Liberty and then he died. And then JT died. Toby really had the guilt. But it wasn't Toby's fault. He didn't see that coming. But anyway, you know, Nick was never mentioned again. It's possible that Nick might have gotten charged with conspiracy and maybe served some Judy slash jail time himself. And all that. Anyway, number 19, of course I have to do fingers. Number 19 on the list with six votes was Julia leaving Albert led to Craig's abuse from C-Duel 157. So, we'll look at 157 and all that. And this was one of the recent ones. So, one number 157. It didn't make the 20, 2022 version because it was not in the top 150. So, anyway, this is from August 20 of 2022. So, yeah, about 11 months after this is taped on July 20 of. And the fact of the matter is that I talked about the fact that, you know, Craig being abused in season two. It was Julia saying, and, you know, Albert needed an outlet for his problems. Poor Craig was it. Now, I think this was probably a popular opinion to some of you, but, you know, Craig being abused by Albert. What led to Albert's abuse? Maybe Albert was just trying to do something. But the simple fact is that Albert, you know, we didn't know about Craig's story family storyline in season two and why he hung around Angie and Emma and Joy couldn't understand it but then the pieces fall together after Craig um, plays chicken with a tray and Sean and Emma tell Joey that Craig's problems are with his dad because his dad abuses him and even Angie pipes up so through some stuff that Emma found they found Craig at his mother's gravesite which was Julia Manning okay his mom died his mom so maybe the death of his mom led you, uh, like Craig down the rabbit hole. And then, you know, Albert is upset losing his wife to death and all that. But it's more complicated than that. Julia actually was mentioned as Joey's ex-wife wife that died. So Joey's wife who died was Julia, who was Craig's mother, who left the Mannings and went with Joey and all that. And, of course, that gave birth to Angie. So Julia, so basically... Julia did that. And then Craig and Angie are step-siblings and all that. The pieces fell together. But, of course, it's like, why would Albert abuse Craig? It doesn't make sense. But the popular fury is that once Julia left Albert, because maybe Albert had the terrible streak, Albert needed a punching bag for his frustrations. He couldn't go to therapy. He didn't want to do anything. He was a brain surgeon. And he basically beat up Craig for his own good, for no good reason. I think it was because Julia left him and Albert needed an outlet and still used Craig as an outlet even after Julia died. So that was just pure pathetic in my mind. All right, number 18 on the list with seven votes was Claude's death needed to be in the Degrassi canon from C Duel 111. So we'll just take a look at the. Um, the analytics to this one. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that Rachel Violetta went a top, uh, is one of my muses and she talked about the whole Julia and Craig situation. My video. So anyway, this is from December 10th, 2021. Cold suicide was needed in Degrassi Canon. So this was one of the early um, unpopular opinions based on, not, not in number, but based on the series because this was Degrassi High, not Next Gen or even Degrassi 10 to 14 or next class. So the simple fact is that Claude was this high schooler who had a crush on Caitlin because Caitlin and Joey had their on again and off again relationship. Unfortunately, Claude was a bit of a dick. He left Caitlin high and dry during an, a protest and all that. Caitlin got in deep trouble. Claude didn't go to the trial. I don't know why Caitlin didn't just accuse Claude and force Claude to testify because then Claude would have been in trouble too. 
But anyway, Claude knew he couldn't get in trouble because his parents both hated him in a sense. So there was no third party to take care of Claude. Weird. But anyway, Claude is upset. He wants Caitlin back so badly he decides to try things. But then Caitlin rejects him for the last time and he finally decides enough is enough. With his own life sucking and Caitlin not wanting to talk to him, he decides to bring a gun to the school to off himself. And we faintly hear the gunshot go off when the sound technology comes in, with the new sound technology comes in, in that scene with Wallfish talking to the English class. Snake has the unfortunate task of finding Claude's dead body accidentally, because he had to go to the bathroom. And then Radich, as VP, was involved too. But the reason why this is unpopular, it had to start conversations about the topic. And when I talked about Don't Believe the Hype, I mentioned that this would start conversations and it would be good for people. And yeah, it did. It started a conversation. You know, at one side of the coin when Joanne was upset about Claude killing himself, saying that Claude had troubles, I should have helped more. And Radich tells Joanne, you should, there wasn't much you could do. And Radich gives his poignant speech about, we all feel overwhelmed, but we don't kill ourselves because once we do, everything's over and there's no turning back. And then, of course, you got Lucy, who thought that Claude's suicide was on purpose to make the school feel bad about hurting him in such a way. And, you know, there's a, always a good sign. Both sides of the coin were right. Of course, Caitlin got haunted by Claude in her dreams, and Joey basically told Caitlin, that's what he wants. He killed himself just to make you feel bad about spurning him and to make your life terrible. And that's possibly the whole thing. Maybe Emma had nightmares about Rick having the gun in her head. And all that and nobody told her to fix the problem so yeah i did a couple of unpopular opinions based on the fact that Claude's storyline and rick's storyline were the same because it had a conversation about suicide slash gun violence it also talked about how Claude and rick had unrequited love things Claude loved caitlin and rick loved emma but they both didn't return the love back and that they basically the girls were basically haunted by those deaths. All right, so number 17 on the list, second place in the 16 to 20 poll, was Ashley was right to telling on Craig and Manning in season 139 about the pregnancy in season three. So 139 was this one. So a little bit after Claude's suicide. And this was... Um... Was it warranted? Yeah, I was actually telling Craig a man. June 4th, 2022 was when I did it. And yeah, Ashley was right on telling on Craig and Manny. Because a lot of people figured that Ashley had no right to tell about Craig and Manny's pregnancy. But I'm saying Ashley was right. Ashley had the right to do so. So in season three, Manny, Craig, and Ashley were in a love triangle. Craig was supposed to be with Ashley, but he fell for Manny at a rave and then impregnated Manny. I don't know if the rave was the main reason why Manny got pregnant, but, you know, accidents will happen, happened. That episode was shown in Canada, but it took two years for the States to do it, and they only showed it because Cassie Steele, a.k.a. Manny, um, wanted the episode for a staff picks thing, so Team Nick had to oblige. So, you know, Manny and Craig were unsure about the pregnancy, and then they figured we might as well go for it. In Accidents Will Happen Part 2, Ashley reads a baby book and then decides to go in the cafeteria and tell everyone that Craig and, and Manny is pregnant and makes Manny a pariah and all that. And a lot of people thought Ashley was stupid for doing that. But I say Ashley was right because Ashley was burned by Craig, and she wanted to hurt Craig more than Manny. She wanted Craig to suffer for for cheating on her and all that. And Ashley had the right to. What Ashley did wrong in that season three storyline was take Craig back. She wrote a bad song about him and it was effective. And then Craig's apology song makes Ashley want to fall in love with him again. Ashley, what are you doing? You had the right to, do, to destroy Craig and Yin, you take him back. I think Ashley was desperate for a guy too. And then Ashley had spent some time away from school for some strange reason. But Paige and Spinner helped her get back to where she was. But yeah, Ashley had the right to get mad. Would you? Anyway, so number 16, who won the 16 to 20 poll, was Emma in season two, was the most triggered character. Now, 
from number 152. So that was, that just missed the, so that just missed. So yeah, so, yeah, so this was huge and all that. This was from July 16, 2022. So it was just over a year ago because it's being ta this is being taped July 20th. You know, Emma in season two being the most triggered character. Now it's not Emma was the most triggered in season two as a character. It's overall. I mean, many people got triggered. I mean, s s um, not so much. Um, Maya got triggered a couple of, for a couple of seasons. Ashley got triggered. Uh, Paige may have got triggered. Claire got triggered a few seasons, including the whole flip. Did you flip a switch and erase me from your memory? But no, Ellen season two was the most triggered of any character whatsoever. Season and person. So season two made Emma look like a total dick. I think we can all agree on that. I'm not an Emma apologist. I just basically say that Emma gets more hate than she should. And yes, that is going to be one of the top ten. But the fact of the matter is that Emma in season two was terrible. Her first major season two storyline, well, other than Craig, but she wasn't triggered by Craig's problems. It was by the fact that she found out that her mother, aka Spike, was dating Snake, her teacher. And Emma was pissed off. Emma had a right to get mad that Snake was dating her mom. Like, she doesn't want her What child would want a parent dating their teacher? It just doesn't make sense. But the fact of the matter is that Emma in season two was very triggered and all that. But yeah, she was mad. She wanted to break up Snake and Spike. Spike was not too pleased with Emma's problems. And Emma says, you have me. You don't need Snake. That's selfish to a fault, Emma. My gosh. Emma just didn't like it. But Emma warmed up to Spike and Sneak and all that and was okay with it. However, that almost broke down after Emma found out that Spike was pregnant and all that. Emma's happy for a Spike, but Spike says, I don't want a second accident. Oh boy, you did it this time, Spike. Those words got to Emma. Emma was mad. Manny tries to calm Emma down, saying that this is nothing. But Emma had troubles in that episode, White Wedding. I think it was what it was called. And, you know, she had a cake that was incorrect. Her hair sucked because she didn't do the right thing about her hair. And Sean was coming to the wedding, even though that Emma and Sean had their troubles with each other after season one. So Emma was pissed off. Emma tells Manny to butt out, saying that she needs to do the right thing. So she goes over to Snake's bachelor party held at Joey's, inadvertently gets Toby and JT caught because they were trying to get the strippers, but they fell asleep. So unfortunately, though, you know, that happens. And then Emma talks to Snake, and then Snake talks to Spike. Spike's not too pleased that Emma had to butt in and all that. But Snake said that someone had to be an adult. Manny chews out Emma, but Emma blows back at Manny saying that a true friend would help me out. Thanks a lot. But Emma felt she ruined the wedding and all that. But thankfully those Spike and Snake decided to get wedded, um, get wedded and Emma is like, whew, thank goodness. But that was not the last time she was triggered in season two. Oh no. The whole GMO Foods thing happened. I think it was, was it the next episode after White Wedding when Emma and Ashley and the group does a presentation for Radish? I think it was. Either that or the second episode after that. But anyway, Emma does a good presentation. Radich is saying that due to budget constraints, we have to do, make do with what we got. Emma doesn't understand that. Most students don't. Emma feels that Radich was trying to blow her off, so she decides to do a protest with flyers. Radich takes them away. Emma's ready to wait the way flight. And then, oh boy, Mount Emna, as in Mount Edna, or Mount Emna, blew up like a top. Not the first time. And not the last. So anyhow, they do the cafeteria commercial. It's unclear if Radish had any say in that. But Emma was really triggered, wanted to blow up at Sheila in the cafeteria, inadvertently starts the food fight that gets her in trouble with Radish. 
Rad, after Emma decides to protest over free speech, Ratch says to apologize for everything or risk a lengthy suspension. Emma decides to apologize for the food fight and the problems with GMO foods, but says my right to free speech was violated and I'm taking the suspension to show Radich that I'm not going to be deterred. And Radich, of course, is upset because Emma just basically told on him in front of everybody. But yeah, Emma was triggered by that cafeteria commercial and all of that. And Emma was going to wave the white flag at Radich. But yeah, she was terrible. I mean, I can't think of any character or any season that had Emma being more triggered. I mean, maybe season six for Emma, but no, because Emma had three things that triggered her in season two. Season six was just one and a half. Okay, so that is that. So the 16 to 20 is done. Now it's time for 11 to 15. 36 folks and one did not do so well. All right, so number 15 on the list is Emma's glow up issues from C Duel 19. So this is from way back in the day. If I can find it. So, well, zombie Emma and the writers think because the writers fucked up on Emma's thing. I really hated Emma's glow up because Emma's glow up really ruined her. I know a lot of people would probably agree with me and all that based off of August, what I did August 15, 2020, almost three years ago. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, Emma really had issues and all that. I didn't like it one bit. I figured that, you know, it was a terrible reason why Emma went downhill with the writers. Now, Emma in the first three and a half seasons was just basically this bossy, holier than foul character, as she said, to add a character flaw of thinking she had to get involved in everything and making mountains out of molehills. And of course, having troubles with guys and all that. Especially with Chris, that got her ostracized from Manny and Liberty. She tries to go to the Pages group and then they boot her after her supposed hypocrisy. But then, you know, Emma gets the gun pointed at her by Rick after telling Rick that I paid you get a clue. Rick wanted to hurt her. Sean accidentally shoots Rick and all that. Emma's happy in a sense. And then all of a sudden, Emma was melancholy and all that. She didn't process everything correctly. She went down to the ravine with Jay and probably had problems. Had problems that no one solved. And then by season five, her top priority was being with a guy. So much so that she ends up being with Peter, even though that Peter had hurt Manny and put Manny in Emma's possession. Now, yes, P Peter and Emma will be part of this video as well. But yeah, yeah, I'll leave, cool. but the glow up issues were terrible. Those pesky writers had Emma as a strong, independent, supposedly trying to be independent female, turned into a ditz and someone who was clinging towards a boyfriend and friends, who just basically was vanilla or blind, if you will. Well, Emma was blind, but I just didn't like it at all. Anyway, number 14 on the list is Darcy going to Africa was not her choice. See Duel 33. So this was one I really did early on. At Darcy season seven, I talked about that in detail. And I was kind of happy with everything, right? I think so. All right, so yeah, Darcy's behavior in season seven was atrocious. I talked about that. And then of course I had a fury on why she left for Africa from September 23rd, 2020. So the fact is that, you know, Darcy in season seven, Darcy was this goody goody character who helped Spinner redeem himself in season five and six. She ends up being with Peter for some stupid reason because even though Peter had taken Darcy's photos to a guy named Adams, all that, I guess, Peter cried crocodile tears, and Darcy felt bad for him. So Darcy, so the start of season seven, Darcy and Peter are a couple. Peter, Peter's parents are okay with it. Darcy's parents are not, obviously, because Peter's a dick and all that. Darcy still loves Peter and fakes sick to avoid a church retreat and goes skiing with Pe Peter and Manny. Unfortunately, she gets roofied, and she doesn't realize it. And then once she learned she got roofied, she was sickening because she had sex before marriage. And it was with an unknown guy who she probably never would have gotten revenge on. So, of course, the French Club kicks her out. She feels terrible. She self-loves. She tries to kill herself in the shower with a knife. Let's not forget that. Everyone knows about the whole roof thing, but nope. 
She tried to off herself once in the shower, but Manny saves her butt. And then Darcy talks to Simpson about her rape and all that. Simpson says that you have to talk to your mother and all that. And Darcy says no. But then Snake decides to bring up a conversation with Darcy's parents and all that. But Darcy lies and says that Snake was inappropriate with her and Hatzel Ackles has to suspend Snake until further notice. Emma blows up at Darcy. Darcy realizes her mistake and decides to jump off the roof. But Manny saves her butt and tells Darcy, you have to tell everyone or else I will. So Darcy does. So she goes to Simpson and says, I told everyone the truth, even my parents, about things. That you were not inappropriate with me. And Snake says that even though that Darcy went back on her word, the school board has to still investigate because maybe Snake may have pressured Darcy into it. But Dar Darcy did not. Darcy said, I did by myself. Snake tells Darcy, I hate what you did to me, but I don't hate you in general. And then, of course, Darcy um, goes to Brad Camp, gets her revenge on her rapist in a sense. And then, by season 8, she's gone to Africa. And everyone knows Sinead Grimes wanted to go to the 90210 reboot, which was decent, but early on it was plagued by these magazine covers of Sinead Grimes and the other two female leads having a weight loss contest, allegedly. Yeah, Sinead Grimes left, and Darcy went to Africa to atone for her mistakes. But the main part of why I think it's unpopular is that I don't think Darcy went to Africa on her own accord. I think her parents sent her there to try to make her atone for her mistakes, quote-unquote. And then, of course, you know, they put the pressure on Claire not to be like Darcy and all that. You're, you're at school to learn and all that. And, you know, Claire being sheltered and all that. So, yeah, Darcy and Africa was not really her choice. That's what I think. Uh, number 13 on the list is the season 7's deleted scenes needed to be in the main plot. Well, of course, I see Duel 183. Now, I did plenty... I did one way back early in the day, like number 20s and all that, in the 20s. But I decided to do the deleted scenes debacle, make it see duel number 183. Because somebody had posted something about the whole thing. Summer Malu was the one who said, we should be talking about a third deleted scene in this. So January 5th, 2023, I decided to do see duel 183 about the deleted scenes. Now... I'll talk about the deleted scenes Summer wanted me to talk about. And I about the role-playing dice in Back in Black. Because this was, of course, the episode in which Degrassi had to heal from Rick's antics and all that. And Toby goes to Rick's locker and gets the, the role-playing dice and all that. And Sean said, cool dice, which I knew to talk about this. And then Craig comes in and says that, how are we praising this guy? We shouldn't be praising Rick at all. This guy shot Jimmy. And then Sean says, our guy died. It's not a competition. But the two main deleted scenes that should have been in the main product and not in deleted scenes, I don't know why they did that, was in Mercy Street after Rick comes back to Degrassi and Marco and Alex, who were student council president and vice president and voted in the last episode, decided to try to talk to Radich. Radich says that Terry is at a private school and can't talk about her affairs. And then Radich goes on to say that under my understanding, he has not been criminally charged with anything. Marco and Alex says that he's a danger to women, and this is not about the GPA. But Radish says, unless a student has a criminal record, he or she will stay in my school, like it or not. And then he dismisses Marco, saying, I was new to a smart boy, Marco, when they decide to leave. And Marco mocks Radich in the main plot thing. That's why Marco mocked Radich. And when you look at the deleted scene, it's like, is Radich trying to duck responsibility for what he did, uh, allowing Rick back? Or is he being genuine that he had no choice? I mean, Radich should have had the choice. Radich probably wanted to kick him out. Maybe the school board put him up to it. But you never know. We don't know the definitive answer. And with that scene, it makes it look like Radich knew about it, but Radich had no choice. And then the second deleted scene of note was the one after Spinner and Jimmy's fight in Back in Black Part 2. No, sorry, not Back in Black. Time Stand Still Part 2. What am I talking about? They walk together through a hallway with Craig. And Craig says, remind me not to get on Raj's bad side because Raj fouls to destroy the students who did this pain and feathers thing. 
Ray comes back with the painted feathers. Remember, he came back. Revenge is unblinked. And then Spitter clucks at him. Radish says, you're going to talk to me at 3.30. We're going to have a little talk. And then Radish goes up to Rick and says that, I'm sorry for what happened. Take the rest of the day off. Rick says, I'm going to my locker. Okay, but leave immediately. So that was what, that was after Rick almost went after Paige with the gun, but Paige calmed him down. And then Snake sees Radish's thing and says, what's your plan? He can't do any more harm if he's not here. Snake badgers Radich, and Radich says, This is not daycare, and making friends is not part of the curriculum. Since when does making friends be... Since when is there a curriculum in daycare? I guess maybe for two-year-olds and all that. But yeah, I think preschool is much better, because preschool and daycare are almost the same thing, in a sense. That's why I always say preschool, although it's the wrong quote. But yeah, because that actually leads to when Spitter talks about Radich, uh, says Radich knows to Jay is that when we see the product without the deleted scene, it's like, how would Spinner say about Radish knows? We kind of figured that Spinner is saying that because Jimmy's going to narc on him. Whereas, in the if you look at the deleted scene, that's why, because Radish is going to talk to Spinner at 3.30 after school. And that's why Spinner is trying to alleviate his guilt, but Jay helps him try to fix things. Okay. Number 12. Did I say number 12? Okay, number 12 on the list with nine votes in that poll was Emma and Snake being the best parent-child storyline. Now, the reason why it's unpopular is because, you know, I know there's good parent-child storylines like, you know, Craig taking Joey into his... Joey taking Craig into his house, the, um, the friendship between the Tauruses and the Bandaris and all that... But the best storyline had to be Emma and Snake from C Duo 146. Here's why it is. And let's see here. So, number 146. Um, here we go. Emma and Snake being that thing. This was July 2nd, 2022. So, it's been about 13 months. No, 13 months. Yeah, it's been like a month and three weeks since I talked about Emma and Snake being the best storyline. Now, of course, I said it's unpopular because I know there's some great storylines, but Evan Snake's had to be number one. Heck, this storyline kind of started in Degrassi High Season 2 when Snake low-key babysits toddler Emma and actually has a thing for Spike. So he was there for Emma from the start, it seemed. But anyway, yeah, Season 2, Emma, and Sna Emma having the troubles with Snake dating her mom. I mean, fair enough. But Snake calmly tells Emma these things. And you know, Emma and Snake had their downfalls in a sense. The science fair one, when Emma finds out Snake was a judge and figured she won the competition thanks to Snake's involvement. Liberty basically wants first place. She's a sore loser, not knowing that Emma was going to give back the trophy in the first place. That aside, you know, Emma was upset. Snake says that your project was great. I had no involvement. I couldn't really give you good marks. So yeah, so Emma finds out that Snake wasn't being favor favoritism. It wasn't favoritism. So she, you know, starts to talk about Snake and they give nicknames to each other and you know, Emma is happy with Snake. She even makes up the video about the engagement. Good job, Emma. You know, and of course Emma was worried about the whole thing with the abortion and Snake helping fix things. And then, you know, season three when Emma wants to look for Shane and, you know, Spike is a little help. But after Emma got stuck in Stoville, found Shane in a mentally deficient home, she goes after Spike and all that. And then the next day, Snake tells Emma the whole story about how <clears throat> Shane actually wanted to be involved in the baby, but his parents wanted to send him away to some Christian academy just to get rid of him for their own sake so that they can have a life again. But then, you know, Snake says that, you know, he took acid at a concert and fell off a bridge or jumped off. We don't know. He probably fell off by my guess. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, Shane survived, had the brain injury, got sent to the thing by his parents because they wanted to get rid of him without trouble. And, you know, Shane wanted to be there. And Spike, and Snake said, Spike should have told you these things. And she had a right... 
to her privacy, but she should have told you earlier. And Emma said, I would have understood better. Snake gets Emma to make things right with Spike, and then Baby Jack comes in. Of course, Emma has to deal with Snake and his leukemia and all that. Snake gives some good advice to Emma about that whole thing, saying that, you know, when Emma feels like she lost Chris because of her pettiness towards Sean, Snake says, you know, if you love someone and they'll love you back, you'll, you'll be okay. So Chris and Emma get back together, and then, you know, Emma freaks out in Season 3 when she sees Snake's will after trying to degust the computers. After a fight with Alex, Snake says, what's going on with you? And Emma says, I saw your will. And Snake says, well, that's worse comes to worse. Thankfully, though, Snake's leukemia has subsided, and Emma feels whew. So Snake wanted to help Emma deal with the aftermath of the Rick situation in secret, in the episode secret. Like, he, he knew that Emma was lying about going out at 2 in the morning for a walk. I mean, look at Emma's outfit. Are you crazy? Emma's outfit gave her away. Suppose that. And says that, you know, something's wrong. Let me help. But, but he, she doesn't budge. But then at the end of Secret, she decides to talk to things. And Snake says that, you know, tells Spike that there's an epidemic going around the gonorrhea thing. But Emma, you shouldn't be worried. And then, you know, Emma wanted to help Snake in Season 5 after accidentally revealing that Snake had a treast with Hudson Ackles. A secret treast. Emma had her own with Peter. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, she helped Snake and Spike get back together in Season 5. She felt good, but she still had the eating disorder. Snake wanted to help. Season 6, Snake was disgusted by Emma wanting to talk about sex in his class. I mean, what parent wouldn't? So anyway, yeah, it was great. And finally, number 11, just missing out the top 10, was Peter be was Pamela being the worst relationship. Number 163. I know you'd be thinking, how is that unpopular? That's popular. But the fact is that there have been many relationships that sucked. I did a couple of Degrassi-isms, or non-unpopular opinions, about this whole situation. And, and, and I came up with the fact that the worst pairing had to be all that. September 9th, 2022. And I put in the description. Not just to each other, but to others because of their selfishness, manipulation, greed, and insensitive need for a partner to be normal. That's what I went with. That's what, that's what I went with. That's the thing I went with. Because, you know, Allie and Johnny were bad relationship. Fiona and Bobby, um, Sav and Anya seemed to be bad sometimes. Uh, Jake, um, Jay being with Manny seemed to be a bad relationship. Rick and Terry, of course. Paige and Olander, yeah, they were terrible relationship. But Pamela was the worst because of their incessant need to be with each other. So, anyhow, Pamela was terrible and all that. But the fact of the matter with Pema was that, you know, it was terrible. Emma was pining for Peter at the start of season five. At the start, in her line, in the season five premiere, Venus, she said, I need a boy, and I've never been in love with a boy since Hurricane Sean blew through my emotional trailer park, which means that Emma really wanted Sean in the wake of the Rick situation, but she didn't because Sean went back to Wasaga. But the fact is that, you know, Emma was so gung-ho for being with Peter that she ignored the fact that Peter had managed to take advantage of a drunken Manny flashing her breast saying, I'm going to be famous. And the simple fact is that, you know, Manny was blackmailed. She was told, you date me or you give me $3,000 and I won't release this video. Manny tries to get the $3,000 back, I can't. And Peter says, oh well, this video goes out to everybody. And Manny's embarrassed. Emma is upset by it, but not because of what P Peter did, but what Manny did. It says that, you're trying to steal my guy, the guy I've been looking forward to being with. How could you? Emma stupidly did it, did stupid things again. She jumped to conclusions that she was prone to do. The fact of the matter is that, you know, after insight, after realizing what Peter did to Manny and Manny being kicked out of her house because of her father saying that you obey me or leave and Manny wouldn't budge. So she decides to take Manny in, maybe as guilt and all that, maybe as a mea culpa, but probably just to get, get Manny to obey by rules saying that, you know, if you 
there's a baby, then I can throw you out. What a bitch move. But the worst part was that, you know, Emma was going to get Peter back, re get revenge for me and help Manny out. Perfect. But then she sees Peter's shirtless pics and in Peter's positioning in a broom closet, if you will, Emma felt bad for Peter. And she says, why not? I got to be with a guy. Of course, I talked about that in the clingy phase that she wanted to be with a boyfriend because she didn't have a boyfriend when Rick nearly killed her. It's a protectionist thing. It's a protectionist thing. But the fact of the matter, guys, is that Emma dated Peter in secret. It was almost exposed because of the whole fact that Emma's stepdad and Peter's mom, as in Hansel Ackles and Simpson, actually were having a treast. Snake got thrown out. Spike was upset more so that Snake wanted to prevent Emma from telling about this, and Emma had a right to tell. Simple as that. But the fact is that, you know, Emma and Peter were still dating in secret. Manny f threatens to expose um, Emma's eating disorder, and Manny says, fine, I'm dating Peter. Are you happy? Emma's, Manny's not. And Peter even is worried that Emma's not eating and all that. So Emma, so P so Emma gets an intervention and blasts Peter and Manny and Snake, for that matter. I think she was just trying to duck the problem. But, of course, she has a panic attack and, you know, goes to the hospital, gets better with her eating disorder, and everything's fine. It's such a fact that season six that everyone's okay with Peter dating Emma still. Unfortunately, Sean somehow comes back in the picture and threatens to ruin things. Manny tells Peter about Emma being with Sean and all that, their history and all that. And I think Emma, Manny was worried that Emma was going to dump Peter off for Sean because of her insensitive need to be with Sean. And yes, that's, of course, in the top ten. However, let's not forget that, you know, Peter decides to frame Sean for drugs because Emma didn't give a straight answer who she wanted, Sean or Peter. I wish Emma had given an answer. But Peter was trying to save his face and make Emma like him and all that. Emma destroys Sean by talking about him badly, and then he thinks he's won. However, Sean knows that Peter used his mom's influence to get the drugs in the locker. So they decide to have a street race initiated by Jay for Emma's heart. Sean hits a pedestrian, wants to help the pedestrian, but Jay tells him to leave the scene of the accident. Of course, Peter gets off with community service thanks to his dad's connections with the police board. And Emma stays with Peter, and Emma's upset that Peter can't go to the dance with her. So Emma wants Peter to sneak out and go to the dance. Like, why, Emma? And the worst part is that, you know, Emma is talked to by Jay and Manny about Peter, but Emma's like, Peter's been there for me. He held my hand at the hospital when I had my eating disorder. Wrong! Peter was talking to Snake. It was Manny who held his hand, her hand. Well, Emma's hand. And Emma says that, you know, he was there for me. I have I thought Manny had a line when talking about Sean saying that, and who saved you from a bullet? But no. And then Emma finds out that the mask in her locker was put there by Peter, even though that Peter doesn't know her combination. Then the pieces fall together and she blasts Peter saying that you used your mom's key codes, didn't you? Yeah. Just like you put the drugs in Sean's locker. I had to. It was for the relationship and Emma blows Peter off and Peter gets in trouble with Hatzel Ackles. But the fact of the matter is that like a lot of people said that if it because it inconvenienced Manny, Emma was okay with it. But when everything inconveniences Emma, then she blows a gasket. It's all about her, isn't it? I agree with that sentiment. That is popular. But I think Emma was the worst relationship because of how, you know, Peter was such a dirt bag to Emma, Manny and Darcy, for that matter. Although, Mia was good and all that. Stop calling me. I know that it was actually a good move. Sorry about that. Someone's trying to tell me to go F myself. But the simple fact is that, you know, Emma's need for a boyfriend was terrible. Being with Peter. If Emma was the same Emma from the first three and a half seasons, there would be no way that Peter would have been anywhere near Emma. She would have basically frozen... Peter to Antarctica. But the fact of the matter is that, oh my God. Emma was just terrible for both 
parties involved. Peter wanted to be with somebody, probably to do stuff, and Emma just wanted to be with Peter no matter what the consequences were. Disgusting. So anyway, that's that from 11 to 20. Don't forget, top 10 video coming up next week. Anyway, I'm Joe Dunn. So that's just it. That's basically 1611 and then 11 to 15. I hope you enjoyed this video.